some of my favorite sounds over the years, uh, either my own or uh, <clears throat> other people's sounds. Um, that one uh, that you just heard, uh, we'll get into first. So that's sort of my interpretation of uh, the classic Kiss sound. Uh, Ace Frehley has noted on several occasions recently and in, in the past I don't know since the reunion tour at least talking about past kiss records and that uh, a lot of the amps were in, in his words overdriven with a, a big muff and a an LPB1 uh, power booster which is that that pedal in particular is my all-time favorite <clears throat> um, so let me t show you what I did to put this little rig together. First of all, is the guitar. It's a 1992 uh, R Ibanez RG uh, 550 with a hot bridge pickup and uh, kind of some strat. This is well. This is the ultimate super strat right here. Uh, the next ingredient is the amp itself. It's a Jet City Pico valve uh, designed by THD. If you're familiar with those guys, uh, it's down to set to two watts, really clean, um, and it's tubed like an early Marshall uh, with a 5881 and. The core is, the first pedal on my chain is this uh, triangle big muff. And this is the settings that I use. It's pretty close to what I normally use, except the, uh, the volume is not so high. Uh, one thing about these, these pedals is once you get past a certain part with the, uh, the volume control, it starts acting like a boost. So... And because I have a boost 
Next, I have the volume down. And this is what I'm using. This is what I'm using in place of my LPB1, uh, which is over at the farm, being gainfully employed. So I'm using this instead. This is a uh, Klon Centaur copy from Electro Harmonics. It's the soul food. You've probably heard about it by now. And as my uh, buddy Tim likes to say, I use this for my uh, sparkly cleans or complex cleans or slightly dirty or edgy or whatever you want to call it. So this uh, gives the front end of the amp a boost. And these two together are what you uh, heard for the majority of my little tune there. This in the beginning by itself and then these two together. The swooshy, warbly stuff and this rig is handled by the uh, Electroharmonic Small Stone. Uh, I don't know if Ace ever used this, but I do. This is my, my favorite uh, phaser pedal. And it's kind of cool for that early rock sound. Now I have uh, a memory toy delay. It's all analog keep it a uh, pretty short delay for the most part and if I want to do some funky stuff which I'll show you in a little what a little bit with some of the other rigs uh, it's capable of doing that too so back in my early days uh, which is over 30 years ago now um, I finally found a pedal that really suited my style and it was the rat uh, in particular, it was the Rat 2. Um, there's nothing else like it. Uh, actually, there's a lot of other things like it, but they're copies. And this is another copy of it, the Flat Iron um, from Electroharmonics. It is by far the most inexpensive and easy way to get my old sound. So... I'm going to put this together with uh, a stereo electric mistress and our memory toy and see what we come up with. As you can see, the uh, the variety of sounds just out of those three pedals alone is uh, pretty broad. So over the years, I got away from the Rat uh, mainly because uh, it broke. 
So I got into the Tube Screamer. And this is Electro Harmonics version of it. The uh, East River Drive. It's an extremely good uh, 808 based uh, Tube Screamer circuit. Um, and then combined with the Boss Graphic EQ is my recipe for metal. So along with the, those two pedals and a nano clone for some chorus and uh, the memory toy plus a heavy guitar to go with it, the seven string. Okay, so this is like my favorite way of getting heavy. One of them. Um, this is the classic Slayer way, by the way. Uh, but this is not exactly new. The idea of a distortion pedal and an EQ pedal together dates back to Randy Rhodes, who used it quite effectively. Um, and, of course, these days, countless numbers. So, this is just the EQ and the and the uh, East River Drive by itself. <laughs> Tube screamer by itself. EQ. of an op amp big muff and the screaming bird treble booster you'd be surprised at how heavy this sounds so uh, we're uh, both familiar we're all familiar with both of these I think right this came out in 78 um, and this is uh, came out alongside the uh, LPB one and uh well without further ado let's just hook it up and give it a whirl we'll hear them back to back all right so here we go getting crunchy old school style but still well here we go <laughs>
that's a pretty broad array of tones right there and those uh pretty sparse uh, setups um we'll do more of this in the future um for now listen back to this stuff and I don't know, maybe tell me what you think of it. And uh, we'll do more of these little tone recipes. So until next time, this is Bruiser, signing off.